smoking. We coming for you, nigga. And on the grill. Yes, Once sir. Again. Yes, sir. Got that. Uh, who who do we say last week was the day of pork steak? <laughs> oh shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, who do we say was a pork steak last year? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When you get cooked, you get burnt on it like the crit. Well, some pork steaks on there for sure. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll be seeing me going back and forth. Uh, bet, bet. On pork steaks. Oh, that's all good, man. It, it's a nice ass day outside too. Yeah, it is. It Way is. Way nicer than it was this whole week, man. Like it's been raining all, and all, all this that damn shit. rain. Yeah, man. All this damn rain. Man, it, it make it even worse, man. So it's just like working from home and all that shit. So when I work, I got to pair with somebody else. Like we do pair programming, right? So right. I pair with somebody all day long. So okay. literally I'd be on a video call, like writing code with this other person. We got like a screen share and like we both can take control of the mouse and keyboard and all that shit. But right. it's more than nerve wracking when you at the crib, it's raining. It's like <laughs> comfortable as hell. I'm like, man. I just got my little brother record in the in the mail. I'm like, man, I just want to listen to this shit. Like, fuck yeah. what you talking about, man. Dude, like, that's a hell of a hell of a vinyl. To oh have, man. man, oh man, like that, like that right there. So I, you know, I've been a little brother fan. They hold the whole time they've been out, but right. I've been streaming this album since August. But for whatever reason, it ain't really hit me that they got back together and came out with a new album until I had the shit in my hands. I was like, <laughs> I was like. Damn, these things really did it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, they interludes of that album is funny as hell, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, it, it, so on the on the inside, I have to show it to you. But they got that one interlude where it say uh, Fonte or Wendell Pierce is Fonte and Keenan Thompson is uh, Big Poo. Uh -huh. They got on the inside of this joint a flyer where they Photoshop <laughs> these niggas on their faces. <laughs> so, you might not be able to see this. Oh, here it is. You might not be able to see this. <laughs> but that is actually Wendell Pierce and Kenan Thompson. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what he say? He's a, you going to be out here with these bootleg-ass counselors. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what the hell you just say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a classic album right there, man. I'm like, but yeah, we were sitting here and I just be like, man, I just, I want to do anything else but working right now. Right. And, for whatever reason, my teammates are the most like, hey, we got to be on and working from the moment you sit down at your damn computer to they don't take no lunches. They don't use the bathroom. Right. They don't do none of right. that shit. I and, do. And people, and people on here, this is from Super Ultra Mega Pro Programming. All right. So no, it's Super like, Ultra no. Mega Pro Programming, right? <laughs> I ain't going to tell you where it is. I ain't going to tell you where it is. But, but man, these dudes... So there's, there's been one thing, too, about my job that's real interesting. So being a wrestling fan in my job. So like I said, I work at a software development company with a bunch right. of nerds. Bunch right. of nerds, right? Right. It's something really interesting that even in nerd culture, how people look down on pro wrestling. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Like, yeah. It's insane, bro. Like, like, there's been times, like, I'm, you know, I, I make no doubt about it. I, you know, wear wrestling shirts to work and all that. And, and. You know, I think it might just be the awkwardness, but sometimes you sit down and pair with people and they sit down and they're like, oh, so, uh, so you watch, <laughs> you watch pro wrestling? And I'm like, yeah, man, you know, whatever. And they're like, oh, oh man, I, I just can't get into it. It's just, it's just so stupid to me. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> right. Wait a minute. <laughs> ain't, ain't, ain't nothing worse than when you sit down and you're talking to somebody that's grilling you about pro wrestling and they literally have on Harry Potter suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk bad about pro wrestling you talk about a motherfucker that's got a stick that got some sparkles that come out of it that waves it around in the air and makes magical shit happen like this motherfucker kills dragons with a stick are you serious a <laughs> stick come on y'all know that shit fake right <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a nigga that's wearing a full Darth Vader costume <laughs> on June 7th. Just some random ass day. They wearing full Darth Vader shit and just got their face out. Just got their face out so they can talk to you while you're parent. And I'm the motherfucker that's crazy. Because I watch pro wrestling. <laughs> the force is dumb. I mean, strong with that one. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Take what we want, and after we take Lake Luger and the child, we want the gold sucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you.
We take what we want, we the realest and the best. We want to go to something, we coming for you, no. We take what we want, we the realest and the best. We want to go to something, we coming for you, no. We take what we want, we the realest and the best. We want to go to something, we coming for you, no. We take what we want, we the realest and the best. We want to go to something, we coming for you, no. Come for you, no. No podcast like this Black dudes with an act for wrestling They ain't gotta act cool They that never bash fool And they mass dudes Get a show with act a fool on it Talk smack deal Put the whole rule on it Feel by shots and bruise Your ass is doomed The award if you want it Like one fans with an honest mission Get many your ticks without a mission Nothing but a press pass This is Barbershop Talk with the best last Bless that we rambling on they do listen No, we know we got a couple of schools missing Now who with the two dudes with the cool vision And we coming for you Nipple This is uncalled for. Welcome, everyone, to We Coming For You Cast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we just got to get right into it after that. I mean, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, I admit what I like is nerdy. But if you're a nerd. Wrong, no. There's nothing wrong with, with that shit, like. man. If what you like is what you like, then let me like it and leave me the hell alone. It's simple as that. <laughs> leave me alone, bro. Leave, leave me to my devices, motherfucker. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we got RBS here back in the mix. R-O-D, a.k.a. Rated R, back on the mix. You can find me on all social media platforms as I'm getting up to check out my barbecue at R the number eight, T-D underscore. Yes, and I am RBS, and you can find me at Franchise06, F-R-A-N-C-H-I-C-E-06, as Rated R goes to flip over them pork steaks. Reminder, <laughs> reminder that hit us up, man. Hit us up at WeComingForYouCast at gmail.com. Look, that's some pork steaks. Where they reach at? <laughs> they can reach us. If you, if you want to make a pork steak order, you can also send an email to WeComingForYouCast at gmail.com. <laughs> you get put in your pork steak order. Hit us up, man. We also this week shout out to Daryl, shout out to Matt. I mean, we got uh, a, a Facebook group set up now, sure. so we got a Facebook group. It's private, so we gonna have to vet your ass before you get on. But, but, <laughs> but, but, we got the Facebook group. Join that. I ain't got the link right now, but I'll I'll put it up somewhere under here. Or, or matter of fact, no, nah, just hit us up. Yeah, at, at we coming for you, Kaz, at gmail.com because we want. Y'all to hit us up. So we had to get back to it, man. Daryl hit us up, man, and just let us know that, that, that folks were asking about us, man. And we we're like, oh man, this is this is cool. We you want we, it, you want it, you got it. it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You want it, you got it. <laughs> you want me to get crazy? I get crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> apologize. <laughs> For what? <laughs> I'm a gang member, baby. Remember that. <laughs> Well, let me not say that too loud, because speaking of everything that's going on in the world that's, right now. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like God forbid, God forbid something happened to me. They pull up this episode and say, see, he admitted he was a gang member. <laughs> and we remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> Juice makes good. sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to start it out with the news. And like I said, you know, this is heavy on everybody's minds right now, but just... I mean, it's one of those things where for, for black people in America, it's like the, the outrage is there, the, the hurt is there. It, it's kind of like, I hate to say I'm numb to it, but it, it's it's almost like another day right. with, with some of the things going on. But uh, there's been a few people in pro wrestling that have actually spoke out about what's going on right now. Shout and, out to uh, Randy Orton. Shout out to Randy Orton. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you said that because Forbes... <laughs> Forbes actually wrote about Randy Orton tweeting Black Lives Matter with the, uh -oh. with the fist. And and not only that, but Randy Orton did the fist in his own skin tone. In yeah. his own skin tone. Yeah. 
Yeah. Some, some of y'all, some of y'all be too hyped to, to, to use the black fist emoji. No, nigga. Use the, be true to yourself, nigga. Okay. What y'all got to realize too, man. Randy Orton is from kind of where, where it's from, where we're from. We're from North County, St. Louis. Randy Orton went you to from high school. where you at right now. <laughs> yeah, Randy, where I'm at right now. Randy Orton went to high school at Hazelwood Central. Hazelwood Central at that time is, is, is at that time was majority, it's black people, blacks there. He's, he, yeah. he played athletics with blacks. I mean, so he knows what the deal is. I mean, he's from St. Louis. So he know what, 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 what we've been dealing with and what, 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 but I me, mean, he, he he advocates for blacks. I'm all, and I'm all for it. I'm all for yes, it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the the good brother uh, Alfred Kanua. I hope I said that right. Alfred, Alfred Kanua. He's a, he's one of the sports writers at Forbes. But he writes Randy Orton, who is currently in the midst of a legendary in ring career to the levels which he can afford a plane. Which that's time out. Yeah. Time yeah. Out. Yeah. Randy Orton. Randy Orton bought a plane the other day. <laughs> <laughs> which. Right at all. What, what, can you do? You got any comment on Randy Orton buying a plane? Like, what can you say to that? All I can say is, in order for me to fly somewhere, I have to go to SouthwestAirlines.com or Media, <laughs> JetBlue, Delta, and I have to buy tickets and I have to go through T TSA. This fool has his own plane. Like, 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 like he can literally go wash it. You know, check the tires, fly wherever you want. I can't do that. That's just a testament to how long. This man has been there, and this man has served, played his dues, and he's obviously saved his money. <laughs> his fool bought a plane. Hey, I want to know, he can't get, like, premium unleaded on that plane, right? He has to get, like, jet fuel, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got to get some jet fuel. Like, but, but my biggest question is, what's this insurance hitting for on a plane? <laughs> you, don't, you don't go to State Farm. You don't go to Geico. You don't go to uh, Shelter. Uh, uh, farmers, where do you go to get insurance on a plane, bro? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a like. Can you imagine? Yeah, I need to get a quote on a G a G seven a G seven identity. The plane. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Let me you crunch some up. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, you can't get that shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't have that. I gotta give you this number where he gotta call somebody else to help you out. We can't. We I can't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so Alfred continues as the world continues to mourn the tragic death of George Floyd, who became the let latest in an unsettling stream of unarmed black men to be murdered by the police. Riots have ensued as racial injustice continues to rear its ugly head. Ex-Minneapolis police, fuck that nigga. Orton, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, yep. fuck that guy. Fuck, fuck, fuck all that. <laughs> Orton is a fairly unlikely source for such a controversial topic of like racial injustice. The contemporary version of Randy Orton dating back to 2010 is largely viewed as a WWE lifer whose ability to toe the company line and avoid controversy is part of what has kept him in a cushy position atop the WWE roster as a name brand star. So Randy Orton tweeted, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Orton also shared a Justice for George petition. As of this writing, the petition is on the verge of meeting, exceeding, reading and exceeding its required 6 million signatures. Several WWE superstars have continued to speak out amidst the George Floyd killing, including Sami Zayn, Naomi, and former police officer Mustafa Ali. Okay. So we got them. We got Titus O'Neil has also said something. Seth Rollins has also said something. Paige has been another one. And Joey Ryan, so stepping outside of WWE, Joey Ryan has even put it like this. And I'll pull, pull up his tweet real quick. But Joey Ryan is also, um, for, for those that don't know, famous, famous wrestler who uh, you've probably seen his clips before, but he does, he does the move where somebody, where somebody <laughs> tries to hit him in the nuts and their hand gets stuck <laughs> and he flips and he flips him over with his dick. Now, listen, if you haven't seen it before, <laughs> that shit sounds ridiculous as hell. Yeah, because it is. <laughs> it, it is ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. No pun intended. It is ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I am 12. I'm sorry. But check it out for yourself. It's fun as shit. But Joey Ryan also said, if you're an African-American wrestler being told that vocalizing your support of hashtag Black Lives Matter will cost you bookings, please contact me directly 
when bar wrestling is up and running and regular again. So Joey Ryan also putting his money where his mouth is, telling anybody, hey, man, like, we got the pandemic, all that's going on right now, but when everything's back up and running, holler at me because you will be good in my book, man. What you think about what you think about the outpouring of support from from, from it's folks? It's good. In I'm I'm happy for it, man. Use that platform to to talk about what they need to say. I'm surprised Vince letting them do it, but I mean, maybe they don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like it needs to be said. If you got a platform where you can use your voice, and you're on a platform where you can meet reach thousands and maybe up to millions of people, which most WWE wrestling fans can do it. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Absolutely. Especially with all the, the, the damn racism that's been in pro wrestling for, for years. And don't sit here and tell me that it ain't, because it, it has been. That's, that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> so, sure. yeah. well, I'm Wrestler. all for that. Racism has been in pro wrestling in the past five minutes. Like, what are yeah. we talking about? <laughs> So there were a couple, there were a couple people that was like iffy on the line, man. And like one of them, one of them that disappointed me so much, man. He was, he was almost there. He was like almost there. <sighs> but my boy Chris Jericho, man. No. My, bo- my boy. Say? Come my on, boy Chris, man. Ugh. Come on, man. So uh, I gotta find this. Hold on. I almost, I almost didn't want to talk about it because but you know what? We got oh, to. We got to. We we got we gotta we gotta put it out there. That so Chris Jer- yes, yes. So Chris Jericho tweeted, and like I said, he was almost there. He's almost almost there. He said, it's not a white versus black thing. It's a everyone versus racist thing. And that's the that's the, the picture that he shared on Instagram. No. So he no. says, he says, let's work together, everybody. Peace and love for life. Now, that's not the egregious part. That's not the egregious part. So people. In the comments, we're basically like, yo, hey, man, you know, Black Lives Matter, blah, blah, blah. I think you already know where I'm going with this one in, in uh, Jericho's reply. Uh, I think you already know, man. He he hit folks with the all lives matter, bro. Uh-uh. I'm Sorry, like, uh-uh. so, dude, what are you doing? Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> what are you doing? Nope, Jer- nope, you're wrong, Jericho. Sorry. Sorry, as I eat my chicken ball. Nope. <laughs> Nope. You are incorrect. Black lives matter, my dude. That's what the problem is. I'm be trying to rationalize it and be inclusive. This is one thing that did no. It ain't gonna be it, it, inclusivity with this. I'm sorry. There's been over 300, 300. There's been three, 300 African Americans have been killed by the police, and and people have been getting let go and getting off of on trial. That's bullshit. I mean, I think I read an article today that fucking Michael Vick has done more jail time than any of these police officers that has killed African Americans. Are you oh, for for the dog shit? Are you fucking shitting me? Yep. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> for for the dog shit that he wasn't even really directly involved in. Exactly. His boys was involved in it on his property, and then they 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 sold him out because he the nigga with all the money. Which is stupid. If, if, if you if you if you boys were a multimillionaire, why would you even do that? Like you better be WeeBay, nigga. Like take that charge. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you know, people are all upset about the looting and everything. No, I mean it, it, it's 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 not right. It's no, I, I, that, that ain't right. But at the same token, I mean, the, we're tired of this, man. We're sick and tired of it. And you 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 got people who are hurt, and that's they ain't got really nowhere to vent. Is they now because the police ain't protecting them, so that's their way of venting. If, it sucks, but I mean, I mean, look what happened in Ferguson. They tore some shit up, and now Ferguson has a police chief who's black. There's more African Americans who are on the actual in the police force. I mean, so you can't sit here and say that changes weren't made because they were. So, I mean, it just so happened in Minnesota. This is the second instance that something like this has happened. There's a there's a problem up there. Not only that, is a problem with our country. We got a problem. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Like, and, and I don't know. Listen, tomorrow's not this has an issue. It has an issue. Yeah, yeah, and flat out, man. And like, and that's why I'm. That's why I'm glad that you know, even the people like you were saying earlier, the people that have this platform use their platform to actually speak out about it. Like, like I said, for Jericho, I mean, I'm not. It, it, he was almost there. It, it, it's almost there. But I think, I think he just needs somebody to just like one of the black wrestlers be like, bro. Let me here, here, pour, pour him a glass of Grey Goose, sit it in front of him and be like, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about why what you said was stupid. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of it have to do with just the upbringing. Like, if you haven't sat down and 
you know, had a conversation with somebody who's dealing with that stuff, then it's kind of hard for you to elaborate on the situation. If you don't really know, if you're not on the streets and really knowing what's really going on, then how can you talk about it? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, all that, all that peace and love and all that, we are one human race shit. That's cool. But it ain't, it, it ain't, it ain't the truth. It ain't, it ain't stopping it because the shit's still going on. So. Yeah, it, it ain't the truth. And until and until Black Lives Matter, until people realize that Black Lives Matter it, as a truth, then it will continue to happen. So sorry, and sorry, IWC, we made this a little political, but hey, man, we're we we're, we're black. We stand for our black people, and we're tired. We're just tired of what's going on. I'm not condoning it. I'm not agreeing with that's what that that that, that the way that it's being handled is the right way, but. Changes need to happen. And sometimes it takes extreme measures for change to happen. So that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, and we'll actually circle back to this at the end of the episode. So we're gonna play, we're gonna play a promo from MVP in in the days when he was in TNA Impact and he was in the beatdown clan mm -hmm. with MVP with with himself, Kenny King, Bobby Lashley, and later on Samoa Joe was in the group as well. But MVP cut a hell of a promo around around 24, around the time when Ferguson happened, yep. when, when the Beat Now clan formed. He cut a hell of a promo that and is just out, like. Shout out to MVP because he actually came to Ferguson when all that shit was going on. He yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, he did. He did. He did come to Ferguson when all that shit was going on, man. And like, he cut a hell of a promo that pretty much, you know, sums up what, what, what uh, myself, what Rated R, what people like us are feeling right now. So we're gonna play that at the end of the episode. And hey, if you, if you feel some kind of way about this, nigga, fuck you, turn it off. Uh, if you keep, if you wanna learn something though, keep keep listening and we'll let you know what's going on. Yep, we don't care, you ain't gotta listen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wanna listen? You wanna hear what we got to say? Keep doing the shit you're doing. <laughs> Yo, <mother. laughs> If you tell me a motherfucker lie, or bust your motherfucking face up, why is you here? <laughs> All right, so moving on, moving on, moving on to to, to much better and brighter news. Uh, so of course we're in the middle of the pandemic, we're in the middle of a crisis, but the parent company for New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, basically came out and they have uh, they haven't done a whole lot as far as like uh, like furloughing people, laying people off or anything like that. But what they have said is that they had to cut salaries of executives, okay. right? But nobody else, nobody else in New Japan is losing their job. So that includes all the wrestlers, all the wrestlers still getting their salaries, all the commentators, everybody like that are still doing their thing. So on 527, due to the losses from the pandemic, uh, Bushy Road, the parent company for New Japan Pro Wrestling, announced that the directors of Bushy Road and their group companies would have pay cut from 15% to 95%, depending on the person. Damn. For Damn. the five-month period covering May through September, and then they will return to the regular compensation. Every company in the group will have to cut expenses, notably advertising, promotion, and through all facets. Employee salaries and bonus will also be cut. New Japan Pro Wrestling will start running events as soon as they are able to let fans attend the shows. If not, do empty arena shows first. You can see the difference in the mentality of the people. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's Dave Meltzer's uh, uh, commentary. But what you, what you think about uh, just kind of like New Japan's handling of, of, of business during the pandemic as opposed to WWE or AEW? Um, I mean, it's a business. I mean, uh, I don't know. They don't do, I don't know if it's a, do they do independent contractors over there same way? Like they're not. Uh, I think so. Well, so I know they have, I know they have different classes of wrestlers over there. So they have like the guys that just kind of come in and out, uh, mostly foreigners over there. They are probably intermittent contractors, but then they also have the guys that train up through the system. So they, you know, they, they 18, 19 years old, they go into the new Japan system and even they get, they train for a couple of years and then they go on an excursion into another country, learn the other country style, come back with a different character. I think they might be salary okay. once they, once they go through that whole plan. So it's, it's, it's a, I don't think I'll put it this way. I don't think they paying John Moxley a salary right now, even okay. because he can't come over there and work. Right. Uh, I mean, they got to do what they got to do. They're, they're a business just like everybody else. I mean, they got to they gotta cut wages. And I mean, at least they're not getting furloughed or you're not getting let go. At least you still have a job when 
whenever everything comes back to normal. Uh, they got to do what they got to do. I'm not, I'm not against it. Uh, it is what it is, man. It, re- it really is. It's just the nature of the business that we're in. It sucks. This sucks, you know, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And I think um, I heard uh, another article. I think I was listening to a WrestleNomics podcast, as a matter of fact, and they were talking about how New Japan is leery about doing empty arena shows because they feel like uh, as far as like the Japanese culture, as far as like the Japanese wrestling culture, they feel like they might do uh, they don't want to mess up their goodwill with their fans. Let me put it that way or, or how they put it. So they they're careful about doing empty arena shows just to make sure that they're not messing up the experience, you know? So I, you know, I can kind of go either way and kind of see that. Um, they also got new Japan world as, as well. So they have another revenue stream. If people want to watch classic material, if they want to watch uh, uh, wrestle kingdom that just happened in, in January, they can still do that. So it's a very similar to the WWE network. So We'll see, man. I, I, you know, I like that. The, I like the fact that they're sticking to their guns and doing their thing throughout the pandemic. But I think they're going to have to get back to empty arena shows sooner yep. rather than later, just so yep. they can make some money. Yep. Yep. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. All right. So, in other news, other better news, actually. So, Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, we've talked about Dark Side of the Ring many times on this podcast, but. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring with season two became Vice's highest rated TV series ever. That's crazy. That's ever. crazy. That's crazy. And they also got renewed for season three. So my question to you with, with them being renewed as a season three, what is a story or a couple stories that mm. you want them to, to, to cover on Dark Side of the Ring season three? Ooh. Um, that's a good one. Hmm. <laughs> stories, stories. Uh, I'd like to hear more, a little bit about, more about Brian Pillman. Mm-hmm. Um, discuss, go there. Talk about the racism in pro wrestling. I would Ooh. love. To that. I would love would to see dope. that. You know, I mean, it's the like if they would have put that out right now, <laughs> you don't think you'll get people watching? <laughs> oh, people are gonna watch that shit, bro. <laughs> people are going to watch that shit. And I, I think they did a good job with season two as well. I mean, I know a lot of – shout out to the KC homies, but there were a few of my KC homies that were at uh, uh, the arena when Owen Hart died. Mm-hmm. So they were hitting me up like, yo, when's that Owen Hart joint coming out? I want, I want to watch that. Just And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, that's, <laughs> have you talked to anybody about that? Because that's traumatic as fuck. But <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I think, I think for uh, uh, Dark Side of the Ring season three, one of the stories that I think they should tell is like, like one of, I think somebody talked about this before, but WCW did a show in North Korea, mm. not South Korea. North Korea. We talk about dictatorship, North yeah. Korea. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I don't even know what you would go into with that, but I just want like sit Eric Bischoff down have him crack a couple of his beers and just tell just tell the world how the fuck that happened. That'd be a good one. That would be a good one. <laughs> like maybe maybe that's the one when uh when when Dennis Rodman and Kim John Un got they got cool. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll be. It'll be. <laughs> I, I still can't believe you know since since um the last dance was on, I still can't believe Dennis Rodman left in the middle of the damn finals and go be the NWO. <laughs> Which is hilarious because it was just like I didn't I, I didn't remember that that was the timeline that he was literally like was that when that when that the Carl Malone match? Yeah, uh, the, the, when they um, no they did no the no, Carl, no they did the match after the finals but that's right they that's playing, right yeah. they were playing Utah in the finals though that's right that's right yeah. that's right yeah so they were doing the build up for the Carl Malone uh, Carl mm-hmm. Malone DDP Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman they were playing them for the first time I think yes. I think it was the first time yeah yeah. Yeah. Because they went back to back NBA finals. It was Utah yeah. and Chicago. Yeah. I had a Utah for that for, for that whole time, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still do. <laughs> no, the K Fade never dies in basketball, bro. Oh, I'll tell you that right, this, right this now. This is funny. This is funny. So I was just thinking, I don't know why this popped up. Look, could you imagine going to Utah and wearing a Chicago, like a Chicago Bulls jersey? You probably all the heat that you'll get, fam. 
<laughs> Aren't they a little racist in Utah? I got a little story though. So, I, so uh, and now it's not about the racism, but oh. <laughs> I remember I took a trip. I took a trip up to Sandusky, Ohio, to go to Cedar Point, and Cedar yeah. Point is like the roller coaster capital of of the United States, and preferably. And it's it's in Sandusky, Ohio. So, so this is when LeBron was in Cleveland, and they were that stint playing against the Golden State Warriors all the time. Mm-hmm. So my ass being a heel, I had a Kevin Durant jersey walking <laughs> through the park, <laughs> being this heel with the Golden State Warriors, Kevin Durant jersey. So I'm in line to get on this roller coaster. I think it was Millennium Force. Yeah. And the guy, he's rolling past. He's talking about some, uh, let's go Cavs, let's go Cavs. And my ignorant ass goes, they lost. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little heel turn. <laughs> I, I, I will say, I will say this for for the folks that don't know, man. Rated R is one of the most foremost heels you know, when it comes to sports teams and being in people's cities. <laughs> I think, I think we were in Dallas and you had on a, a Cardinals hat and walked up to a dude that had a Texans jersey. No, no, yeah, he had a Texans jersey on or something like that. It was yep. just like, hey, man. <laughs> he just, just took off his hat and <laughs> held it up to his face, like, hey, man. <laughs> You still, you still mad about this? I was like, bro, wait, wait hey, a yo, minute. Man. You good? Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> yeah, the child, y'all didn't get one of these, did you? Nah, you did. not This had, had, the, it had the World Series patch. Like, this was the one y'all was supposed to get. Y'all was one strike away. <laughs> Damn. David Freeze the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I was like, Day- all right, well, shit. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to fight. <laughs> it won't be the first time when we thought we would have to fight at, 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 a, at a WrestleMania. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it might not be the last, either. It might not be if the last. Like I said, it might not be the last. It might not be the last. <laughs> well, speaking of might not having to fight at WrestleMania, kind of. Not really. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of, but not really. So I'm going to file this under. Now, this might become a segment because it happens so often. Uh-oh. Uh, New segment alert. Yeah, but, uh, man, Hulk Hogan be lying, bro. <laughs> Hulk Hogan be lying his ass off. Like, for real, in real life, that nigga be lying his ass off. New segment. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan be lying. This is the Hulk Hogan <laughs> in the middle of the news segment. The Hulk Hogan be lying. What Hulk Hogan lie about this time? All right, so The Undertaker, who was on, we talked about The Undertaker last week, and we put The Undertaker in the same sentence with a bunch of things that didn't go with The Undertaker. (laughs) But he's been on this press tour, on this media run. He was on ESPN, and he reveals his honest opinion about Hulk Hogan. Okay. So he's talking about, throughout throughout the course of his wrestling career, The Undertaker has faced some of the biggest names in the business. And at Survivor Series 1991, he defeated Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship. Now, Taker recently discussed the match during an interview with ESPN and opened up about Hulk Hogan claiming he suffered a neck injury during the bout. That's right. Hulk Hogan claims that Undertaker broke his neck. So he wrestled a match with a broken freaking neck? With a broken freaking neck. Like Kurt Angle. Way before before Kurt Angle, brother. Way before Kurt Angle. (laughs) (laughs) So the Undertaker says... Finally, I got to San Antonio, and I was like, Terry, I watched the match back, and your head never hit. <laughs> take her, take her. Call. He said, Terry, put it in reverse, Terry. Right. Terry, your head never hit. And, Ter- and Undertaker said, and I quote, and he's like, brother, what it was was you had me so tight that when we came down, I had nowhere to move, brother, and that's why I, why I jammed my neck. I couldn't move at all. And Taker said, then says, at that point, I was like, okay. I kind of realized what you're all about, and that's all I needed. <laughs> so, so he goes on. He goes on to say, when Hulk Hogan returned to the WWE in 2002, <laughs> he said, Undertaker says, and I quote, I was not overly friendly, but I did, you know. If, I, if he was in the building, I always made sure to say hello and engage in the conversation. But, you know, I've always, like I said, from that Tuesday in Texas, right? <laughs> when I got that answer, I knew all I needed to know about him. And then, yeah. you know, 
that's the way it always – my radar has always been up. Anytime I interact with them. That's what other techers said. What you, you think? Can't, you, dude, you, <coughs> you can't tarnish someone's good name in a business where the key – the key thing in that business is making sure you take care of the other person. And we're not talking about just some, some, you know, ham and egger. You talking about the uh, Mark Calloway, the undertaker talking about, ah, you go almost broke. Really? Really? Right. The, the general of that locker room. Almost get the, get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, said, cool. he, he legit said, you were protecting me so hard. That it broke my neck. <laughs> they don't even make sense. They don't even make sense. How do you protect some? It breaks your what? <laughs> he said. He said he was holding them so. So how do you how do you restrain something so hard that you jolt it? Like think about think about that for a second. Make about that. Like he's basically he was saying like Undertaker Tombstone was like a seatbelt where it was just <laughs> like they got into a car crash. And Undertaker was holding him so bad that only his neck, only his neck that's like be- between the Undertaker's legs on the way down, just just jolted like a car crash and broke his neck. To which, I, to I'm which ha- point, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was say, to which point, with which point, Hulk Hogan had to lobby to get the WWF Championship back in I'm, 1991 from the Undertaker. Man, I'm happy we use your analogy. I'm happy we use your analogy because my analogy was gonna be something kind of yeah it would have been right I was going here comes that combo meter so so like you know <laughs> so like you know when you got it you know you you getting with a chick and you got to strap up maybe you put more than one on and, and, and all that friction cost see see there's it there's that combo meter there it is oh. there it is. There it is, by oh, halfway there, halfway that, that that was a big chunk that it filled up there. That was pretty big right there, man. <laughs> that was that was an eight hit combo right there. Hey, we need to get us searched with the EX. <laughs> we come <laughs> for you guys on the bottom. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should. Or, or like, yeah. remember, remember when Cassie used to have them shirts in the in the mid two thousands that lit up. Like they had a whole, they had a whole like light box that they put in their back pocket and they turned it on and it light up. Every, every, time, we, every time we say something, like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, that's all I got for the news for 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 today. But a lot of things happen in pro wrestling this week. Have you have you have you seen all the shows this week? Caught up? Yes, on I have. Them? Yes, nice. I have. Yeah. Yep. Nice. So let's talk about it, man. We'll talk about the weekend review and pro- professional wrestling this week. So I'm going to start it out. You know, we're going to be on brand, very, very on brand with this first one. But shout out to Apollo Crews, your yes, frat sir. brother, yes, your sir. frat brother for yes, winning his yes, first sir. championship in, in WWE, winning the I U.S. Think, championship. I think he's probably the first person from our organization who's won that belt. So uh, yeah. that's history right there. I think so, because I don't even think any other other blacks were – were part of that organization. So, yeah, shout-outs to him, man. <laughs> and the funny thing was – so this is the thing I have with Apollo Crews. It's nothing bad, but I went to uh MLW show uh, for the first time, and I took a picture with Apollo Crews and had no – and had a full conversation, had no idea he was part of my – he was my frat brother. And then I hooked up and I called RBS. He's like, you know that was your frat brother. I was like, get the f- – out of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i told him i was like i was like man you hit him up like what's up <laughs> I was like, are you serious <laughs> yeah man so shout out shout out to the to the to the good brother apollo cruz for that one so we're gonna move on you know what uh, I'm, gonna gonna, that, I'm gonna throw that picture up here for our oh picture. yeah 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 you definitely got to you definitely got to if, if so we're we gonna move we're gonna move away from the brothers right before we move back to the brothers but Edge versus Orton. Now, they had a dope match at WrestleMania. Really, really dope match. Uh, MD Arena, Falls Count Anywhere match. Gave us a tour of the whole uh, performance center. So, <laughs> so, shout out to you, Cass, that paid all that money to, to get a tour of the performance center. We got it for, for $9.99. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for my regular subscription. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so Edge and Orton have continued their feud because, like I said, it's been top-notch. Now, at Backlash, Edge and Randy Orton are going to compete in what is being called the greatest wrestling match ever. 
first and foremost, hold what? Up, hold up. Before, but, uh, oh, there you go. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> I was gonna say before before you put that. Let me put this one up real quick. <laughs> you bet not tell Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, well, well, you need to subscribe to our. When we get a Patreon, I'll give you the full background on that. I don't want to go into it. This is the wrong photo. I'm sorry, wrong photo. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll, tell, <laughs> I'll tell one story about that. So that night. You know, that was that was the first night we met Nash. We met DDP that night too. We met Tommy Dreamer, obviously. So <laughs> we're all we're all slush because it's open bar. Yes. And you know, like the five of us, <laughs> the five of us, including Kevin Nash, killed a bottle of Hennessy while right. we were there. Right. So every time I saw Tommy, the first time I saw Tommy Dreamer, he was like, Oh man, you know where to get something to eat around here, man. I'm hungry. I need a sandwich. So every subsequent time that I saw him, I'll be like, Yo, you get that sandwich yet? <laughs> <laughs> but every single time I said it, I was like a little bit more drunk <laughs> every subsequent time. So the last time I said it, he was like, hey man, he was looking at me like, I'm gonna beat your ass. You asked me about that sandwich again. <laughs> <laughs> among, among other things, he should want to beat our ass for. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Anybody doing nothing? Anybody <laughs> doing nothing? Anybody doing nothing? <laughs> come on, yeah. Matt. What's up, Matt Striker, man? Come on, man. Come on, man. Matt, you, you, come on, man. Matt Striker with them cuff with the with the cufflinks. With, with the super cuffs. With the super cuffs. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> oh man. All right. We'll come back to you. if you find me. I'll, I'll throw it. I'll throw it on here. Okay. But so, Edge versus Orton, greatest wrestling match ever. First question: The hell is the greatest wrestling match ever? <laughs> it ain't them <laughs> and they know that I think, yeah. okay so i heard it on a podcast this this was a uh a exact uh this was a shot at dave Meltzer because mm. i think dave Meltzer the first time that they wrestled at wrestlemania i think dave Meltzer gave it like two out of five stars it's this is the I like that. I like it. Yeah. You know what? I'm on board with this match now. <laughs> if it's a shot of Dave Meltzer, I'm and, and you know, I I don't I'm I'm not I'm not like against Dave Meltzer or anything, but yeah, man, I, I like the fact that every now and then they just come back and be like, oh for real? Oh, oh yeah, all right, bet, bet, bet. Now, in that same vein, it would be hilarious if Edge and Randy Orton was out here doing like 360 corkscrews. And like flipping, <laughs> even better, even better. I'm gonna book this match right quick. I'm gonna book this match. I'm gonna book the greatest wrestling match ever with Edge versus Orton. So check this out. So they both come out. They both in the ring. They both go to lock up, and they and then it just cuts. Like you see the cut, and they both turn into dudes. Two dudes that are like way smaller than they actually are, wearing their gear, and then they do this full luchador segment. <laughs> Like they just flipping and, 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 and jumping through the ropes and shit, and planches and all kind of shit. The Randy Orton short person got got permanent markers, scribble scrabble on his arm and shit to match his tattoos. And shit. <laughs> for for some reason, for some reason, uh, Luchador Edge got a fake beard on. He just he wearing a fake beard. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they both they both dive out the ring. They do a, do a plant like Randy like Randy Orton do a plancha on, on, on fake edge. And then they cut back and they both just laid out. They they the, the real selves laid out on the ground. <laughs> Dude, that would be funny if the whole match was if using stunt doubles and they were doing that, and then the editing would be cutting back and forth. That shit would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they they fight backstage at one point. And like in the back, you kind of see both of them sitting on the chair drinking coffee together. <laughs> and they look up like, oh shit. <laughs> that would be funny as hell. Now, that might be the greatest wrestling match ever. <laughs> yeah, I would have to concur. <laughs> so WWE, do the right thing. Make it as ridiculous as possible. All That's right. Cool. Yeah. So moving on. So we had a lot of brothers in a match on Raw this past week. We had the Street Profits, the yep. Raw Tag Team Champions, versus Bobby Lashley and MVP. Okay. So 
Bobby Lashley MVP went over the Street Profits, and Bobby Lashley is using the full Nelson master lock as his okay. finish now, right? So my question to you, we, we, we know Bobby Lashley is feuding with, with, with Drew McIntyre over the WWE Championship, right? But do we even need to watch that match? I want to say no. <laughs> because, like, I think we know what's going to happen. Like, we know Lashley's not winning. He's yep. not going to win. It's, it's been, look, it took 52 years to get a black champion. They're not there to do that day to jump on that train real quick. Like, I will tell you what, I will be shocked if that happens. I, I would be. Because I really would like to see this faction that they're trying to do with Bobby Lashley and, and, and MVP. I really would. Uh, we all know that. <coughs> ain't no, ain't no other black dude ready to touch that belt no time soon. It ain't nah. happening no time. It ain't happening, man. <laughs> no, nah, not at all. Not you better at go all. try. You better all ask. Better go smack down. Try to be universal champion. That now you might be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the the cool ranch Dorito championship that uh, yeah, Braun Strowman. It ain't belt. no black person that had that yet either. <laughs> Damn, that belt. That belt is a few years old. It ain't now black person had it. Damn. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know what? They could have. They they literally could have had a black person hold it first, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But that ain't gonna happen. They that tried to give him Balor, and then Seth Rollins hit him with too hard with that that sheet of that bag of corn, and he had to go sit down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that bag of corn. <laughs> yeah, remember when we said it was Seth Rollins' special move would be on that King of Fighters? Yeah. He, where he would shoot the bag of corn, and then turn it because it's hot, and it turned into popcorn. <laughs> And it popped all on his shoulder. He's like, ah, ah, shit. <laughs> and Balor was gone. Now, now he's evil on NXT, man. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way, man. I just, I, we, we, we've seen this movie before. We've seen the script before. Uh, yeah. Drew McIntyre just won the championship. Yeah. They've literally been trying to push Drew McIntyre from the time he set, stepped foot in WWE. As the chosen the, one. As the chosen one in like the, the mid-2000s. He ain't losing that belt anytime soon. No. Drew, no. Drew McIntyre might be the Corona WWE champion. Like, yep. for the duration of yep. Corona, yep. he's going to be champion. Yep. They said, y'all better be happy. Paulo Cruz got that United States strap. Be happy with that and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, is, how is that that the champion of the United States is a black dude? <laughs> right Man, <now. laughs> right, right now at this time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow, like br- that blew my mind. Like, so, so we coming for you, Cass. Question of the week: How does it feel? How does it feel that a black man is the U.S. champion at this point in time? Email us at we coming for you, Cass, at gmail.com. But the current Don't landscape answer. in this country right now, the black man is the United is the champion of the United States of America right now. <laughs> Let us know how you feel about that. If, if you feel so inclined, like, write us an essay. Write us, <laughs> write us a short essay, bro. I want, I want it to be, like, I remember back in the day when I, when I, was, when I was applying for college, there was, there was a scholarship that I had to, that, that gave out around Martin Luther King Jr. birthday. And every year, every year, you had to write an essay about Martin Luther King Jr. And it was funny because I, I had to do it throughout college as well. And like, I wish I could find these essays because they became more militant as the years went on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first one, the first one started out like, yes, Martin Luther King's dream of, of everyone being, you know, race, creed, color, everyone being one. Right. And then by the time I got to senior year, I was like, you Look. know, right? Martin Luther King <laughs> said the white liberal is the biggest detriment to the <laughs> black people. <laughs> and I got the scholarship every year, so it must. That's all that mattered. It's all that mattered. <laughs> 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 but tell us what you think in the same fashion about the U.S. champion, Apollo Crews, being a black man. <laughs> all right. So did you see NXT this week by any chance? No, I did not see NXT. I did, okay. and I okay. didn't. I didn't get the chance to watch all of AEW either. Okay, so I didn't watch NXT either, but I did see clips of the. Uh, I think they called it a Tiger Pit match. I can't remember, but uh, 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 with um, uh, Matt Riddle and uh, was it that Thatcher guy. The, the, I forgot what his name is, but anyway, right. uh, looked like a dope match. Definitely gonna go back and check that out. But we're gonna put a pin in that because that's gonna come back later. So AEW. 
So, and I, I also had to catch quick clips of AEW because my DVR forgot to, to, to record it somehow. It, it was set up to record. I went to watch it today. It wasn't there. I was mad. Right. It should be. Yeah. <laughs> so, after one of the most inter- after, I have to say this now. The yes. Stephanie Stampede match is now probably the most entertaining match ever seen in all of all time. I'm sorry. Oh man. Um, you combine football. First of all, they're they're wrestling in an in an active NFL stadium with an active NFL team. Yes. And they use the entire stadium. <laughs> <laughs> like not even not even not even entire field. The entire right. stadium. The whole stadium. <laughs> I think I, I think I, I, I texted the, the group about that. I was just like, yo, this is a flex. Yes. This is, this is Tony Khan being like, Vince, Vince, you can't do this. Can't do this. You can't do this. <laughs> like, hey, if there's one thing. I was like, my God. Like, yeah, he had the cheerleaders there. He had yep. the, the, the pyro. I'm like, yo, what? Yeah. But I, I, I agree with you. That was an entertaining ass match, man. Yes. Yes. Of all time. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, just I mean, there was so much of it. And shout out, shout out to who I think the MVP of the match is, Sammy Guevara. Yeah, <laughs> by far, by far, Sammy Guevara. Like, I remember, I remember. So the first time I ever seen Sammy Guevara was at uh, uh what was that All In? Uh huh. Either All In or All Out. The first like actual AEW pay per view, and he came out with that big ass panda head or whatever, and I was like. Is this nigga? <laughs> what is this dude? Like, what? Really, Panda? But apparently, apparently, Chris Jericho pulled him to the side. It was like, lose that. Listen to everything else I gotta say. You good? But Sammy Guevara, I mean, just running, running, running away from getting hit, getting his ass whooped, and waking up like forty <laughs> minutes later and thinking he won the match. <laughs> Taking that power bomb from from the stands to the to the entrance ramp of the stadium. That was crazy. That was a crazy bump. And I think, I think also AEW's cameras undersold how crazy that bump was yeah. because of their angle. Mm-hmm. But on being the elite that week, they showed the view from, from down below. Yeah. And that's like that's like 30, 40 feet up. Like yep. it was crazy. The margin of error for that shit was insane. Yep. So shout out to them. Shout out to uh 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 shout out to Matt Hardy and uh Santana Ortiz too. They had a funny spot where they, now it was poorly timed, but when they <laughs> when they were fighting Matt Hardy in the swimming pool, and then he came back as like four different versions of Matt Hardy. That shit was funny. <laughs> that shit was hilarious, man. But and they yeah. put they put the B one stats on the side, and everything like like it was back in these WWE. <laughs> and everybody looked at him. Everybody looked to the side and was like, "What the fuck is this?" All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Hangman, I mean, Hangman Page riding in that bitch on a horse. Riding a horse. <laughs> I'm like, listen, none of, none of this stuff sounds real. None of this stuff it, sounds like anything that should happen in the rest of the match, but it did. And it I'm happened. Proud of it. Yes. I'm very proud of it. So, very, shout, out to, shout out to AEW for that, man. So, this week on uh, AEW, it started out with Young Bucks. Um, I think it was Young Bucks and Hardy, I think. Fighting uh, Butcher Blade, so yeah, fighting Butcher and the Blade in private party. Um, but in the after that match ended, a old school truck pulled up into the arena, and out of that truck comes uh, uh, Cash Wilder and Dax Hardwood, as uh, we talked about a couple episodes. <laughs> FTR debuted on AEW this week, so. They're actually they they we were thinking they were gonna be fear the revolt. The commentators referred to them as FTR. They came out. They were obviously going to fight the Young Bucks, which yep. we thought. We Turned thought. around, fought Butcher and Blade, and then just kind of squared off with the Young Bucks as it faded out. So, what you think about our yep. FTR, man? What you think about them debuting at AEW? I, I like it, man. I like it. This is this, this is their chance. Like basically, their career just got hit with the reset button. They're yep. still on a platform where millions of people can see them. Man, take what you learned from NXT and in WWE, and since they didn't want to use it and use you guys to your advantage, man, blow up in AEW, dog, and, and show them what they had and then what they didn't use, man. Like, like 
because now it seems like they got more of a creative control now. Because mm-hmm. um, I know there's a little lax over in AEW. Well, I'm not gonna say lax. They just they just let the talent have a little bit more uh, uh, control of where their destiny lies in regards to creative, and they're in the right position for them to push that 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 image that they both have uh, onto the mainstream. And I think it'd be great. I really do. That's the perfect place for them. Absolutely. And I think they'll really get over as well I think, with I don't think it would just be oh, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. you froze you froze up a little bit when you started. Yeah. Um, no, I was about to say, uh, I think that their original gimmick in NXT will really go over well in AEW. The whole, you know, no flips, just fists, like just hardcore wrestling. Like, I think that would really get over in AEW because it's kind of like it, I wouldn't even say it's the antithesis of people in AEW, but when you think AEW, you think Young Bucks. Right. Them basically coming in and, like, teasing them and the Young Bucks are going to feud. Like, that that right there is going to be a good thing for yep. them and their careers, man. Yep. So I'm looking forward to it. Me too. All right. So, other thing I wanted to talk about from that, from, from AEW, is – Cody, the new TNT champion, so he beat Lance Archer for the TNT championship at double to nothing. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> so I posted thoughts on the belt uh, for, for, for the AEW championship, and somebody on Reddit posted this, uh, this red intercontinental champion shaped McDonald's belt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put it. I'm about to put it in the show though, or it might be the it might be the cover of this episode. We okay. might put that up. But that's what I thought about the belt. But apparently, apparently the belt is only temporary. They had somebody working on the belt, and then when COVID happened, they couldn't finish the belt, so they just right. went with what they had. Which I'm like, all right. If you okay. Google, you can Google what the final belt was gonna look like. It's out floating around out there somewhere. It looks good. If yeah. you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. It does look good at the end of the day. So I'm not yep. gonna fault them for that. Yep. So Cody came out. He cut a, a a damn good promo. Actually, he cut a promo. So he cut a promo in a way that you could tell that he's been listening to 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 folks that have been critical of AEW. So I think both praising and critical of AEW, and he kind of put that together in a promo. Because listening to a lot of podcasts this week, he was talking about. Uh, a, a lot of people being like, yo, like Cody is just not the best wrestler. He's just not that guy that, you know, one, one person put it like this. They said, Cody is not the wrestler that he thinks he is. And they were basically saying, yo, he thinks he's a five-star uh, uh, match guy, but he's not, you know? So Cody actually addressed that directly. He was just saying like, yo, um, you know, people think that I, I got on TV because of who my dad is. Yo, first time I got on TV, I was 21. I couldn't hit the ropes right. Uh, I got better, but Dustin got all the wrestling genes. I just had to come out here, and he was just like, look, I'm going to work harder than everybody else. I'm going to be scrappier than everybody else. And then he opened everything up to an open challenge for the Mm -hmm. TNT Championship. So every, I'm presuming every week on Dynamite, there will be an open challenge for the TNT Championship. So my question to you, rated R. Who you want to see him fight for the TNT Championship? Um, Sammy Guevara would be nice. I wouldn't mind seeing yep. that. That'd be a dope ass match. Yep. Uh, I want to. I want him to use that like as of how Cena used the U.S. strap when he was bringing up up starts up. Uh, this is kind of a segue to that question I was going to ask you. Okay. Uh, so. What I noticed so far, and this is, I've, I've read tweets about this, is that with, what people are noticing with Cody is, for the most part, I mean, he's, he's the executive VP of the company. I mean, he's helped start the damn company. And it's funny that he, it's, it's kind of it's hindsight 2020. He's kind of doing what, what Triple H is doing. He's booking himself in, in prime positions in the company. Uh, <laughs> now... It, it, it just seems like every time there's a new star or upstart that comes into AEW, they got to go through Cody, which mm-hmm. was kind of the same with Triple H. If you was coming up through W, you had to wrestle, like Roman Reigns had to wrestle Triple H at, to get the strap at WrestleMania or whoever you, you had to wrestle that. Like, it, and it's starting to get backlash on Twitter. Like, I know everybody's all high on AEW, but Twitter's starting to take notice of that. It's like, damn, how come everybody got to go through Cody to, to be, be, become relevant in AEW? Yep. 
But here's my opinion, and it might not you might not agree with it. Uh I don't see I don't right now currently I don't see and this is no disrespect to him but I don't see Cody as a super high profile wrestler mm-hmm. in any company right now. That's just my opinion. I yeah. don't I don't I don't see it. Granted he does he, he's great, but the man in that company is Jericho. Point blank period. I'm sorry. He's I mean that man. goes yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah. I mean he's got that his resume which he has a bunch of star power i don't see that with cody right now i mm-hmm. i just don't it's no disrespect to him i just i just i don't see him as that that number one star now yeah you can be a star in a company that you created so yeah that's smart but the question i'm asking you is is that do you kind of feel that it's kind of got that triple h stench to it where he's the He's the person, he's the gatekeeper that you have to walk through to get relevant in AEW. How do you feel about that? I, I actually agree with that. As when you started saying that, I, I, was, I was just listened to a podcast about that uh, the other day, but I actually agree with you. Uh, I think that the way initially, let me say this initially, I think the way that they were, they were trying to make him kind of like Triple H, but then also anti Triple H, right? So I mean, and it goes past the whole breaking the throne, blah blah blah. I, I think what happened originally, if you notice, at the very beginning, Cody would get his ass whooped by everybody that would come into AEW. So that was like Butcher and Blade. Uh, that was who there was. There were a few other like tag teams, and I mean, even with Lance Archer, you know, Jake right. the Snake coming in and coming directly at Cody. Now right. the problem, or MJ MJF is another one. MJF right. was another one where where, you know, he basically had to go through Cody. Now, the problem with it, though, and I'll say this with Lance Archer because it's most recent. Well, I'll say this with Lance Archer and Wardlow, actually. Mm-hmm. So the problem with that, though, is in order to keep Cody on top, you've had to have some new people uh, uh, job to him. That's right? true. So you had to have Wardlow in his first match ever in a cage match, which was a dope match. Really, really dope match, and Wardlow looked like really, really good in the match. Right. Uh, and also with Lance Archer. I mean, Lance Archer had a bunch of job matches where he was just beating the shit out of people. And, uh, but he lost his first major match to Cody. So I, the, un, the backlash is understandable because there's, at some point, there was a, a shift in it where it was kind of like, yo, like cats could get over by just like beating up Cody. But now Cody's starting to go over some of those cats. Yep. And I think I know the reason why. And it hit me at double or nothing when when Cody fought Lance Archer for the title or when he won the title. So that match was made to be in front of the AEW crowd. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So the AEW crowd, I think Cody was on his way, especially at the beginning where he was getting his ass whooped by all these people coming in. He was on his way to being like that top baby face and that guy that they could have that star power. COVID killed that shit. That's true. Rona killed that. Now it falls a little bit flat because you don't have people that are like die hard in Cody's corner to, to, to vocalize like, oh shit, this is big. Like think about, think about how that steel cage match would have went off if there wasn't no crowd. That's true. You know what That's, I'm saying? Like yeah. it was a dope match. Don't get me wrong. And Cody jumping off the, off the joint. But one of the things that Cody has done throughout the entire time of AEW is he gives the rousing rah-rah speech to the fans. And, yep. he gives, and, he's, and, he's, and he's making himself that dude. When there ain't no fans, hey, it's a little bit suspect, bro. I ain't gonna lie yeah. to you. Yeah. You and right. I like Cody. And I like Cody I do, too, man. I but, do too. I like, I like him. I just, to me, he's not that, he's not, like when you think star in pro wrestling, I mean, you think Jericho, you think Taker, you think John Cena, you think Batista, you that's those those are names. I'm not Edge, Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. Which which is surprisingly because he was with the fucking faction with Randy Orton and he's not where Orton is now. So Yeah. And then now now granted a lot of that had to do with what was going on in WWE and them using Cody and we, we know how that went it's with fucking Stardust and that bullshit. But <laughs> but maybe I need to be patient, just give it some time. I we'll we'll leave well, I'll leave it as that. I'm, I like him. I like what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just get and, I, 
And I agree with that too, man. Like I think the, the thing we have to remember is Cody is uh, 34, 35 years old. And he yep. started wrestling when he was 21. Or he mm-hmm. started he started being on WWE television when he was 21. So we right. literally saw that man come from being green all the way up, up and through, you know, where he is right now. And if we right. take a step back, man, we got to think about it too. Like we saw the same thing with Randy Orton. We saw Orton super green. That's true. All that. Now, Orton was a few steps ahead of where, I'm not going to say a few. Orton was a lot of steps ahead of where Cody was. <laughs> and I don't feel bad about saying that because Cody cut a promo basically saying the same thing. Right. But like, like, like I said, I think Cody had his momentum to become somewhat of that guy and somewhat of, you know, I don't want to say a new Dusty, but a new Dusty for right. any day. But yeah, the Rona, the Rona said, nah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, the runner was like, we want to see more Kenny Omega. <laughs> the runner would say, we want to see more Jericho. We want to see Moxley. You know, some of, the, some of these other cats that had that established star power. So we'll see what happens in this open, in, in, in you know, this open challenge tournament or yep. open challenge. But yeah, Cody going to need some fans, bro. Yeah, man. Fans in the yeah. So moving on in AEW. So we had. Uh, a battle royal for speaking of the TNT title, we had a battle royal for the TNT title shot. Now, a part of that match, one of the one of the bigger stories was like, are there is there distinction in the dissension in the ranks between Wardlow and MJF? Basically, MJF was just like, "Yo, I'm undefeated. Um, nobody's beat me. Me and Wardlow gonna be the last two in the ring, and then after that, Wardlow gonna know what to do. He gonna know to just jump out and let me win." And Wardlow was like. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> so it ended up being a little bit of dissension between the two of them. Jungle Boy ends up winning, which I'm like, okay, you know, Cody versus Jungle Boy at some point, that sounds good. But the question I want to ask you too with AEW, so I think that some of the heels, uh, Pac, uh, did this as well, but they bring up very good points about AEW and the win loss record. Now, it sounds like part of their booking is that they want to have this win-loss record and that it means something. But then also you have a heel that comes back and says, yo, I'm undefeated. Why am I not getting these shots? There could be a problem though, if too many heels are saying that though. What do you think about AEW and their win-loss record and how that can affect booking going forward? It can have a negative effect. and I was listening, I think it was on Keep It In 100. It, is, it really could have a negative effect because now, like, say if you're trying to get a casual to watch, right, and you got this win-loss record, like, I forgot who it is. There's a main star there that's right now that people like, and the motherfucker's 2-12. and 12. So yep. if you're trying to get <laughs> a casual to watch and they be like, yeah, man, this dude's dope, man. He's off the chain. He does this, that, and the third. And the first thing you look at, if, if records mean something, he's two and 12. Why mm-hmm. should I care? <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think, I think with that, they, they might need to parlay from using the, the, that, that system because it, it, there's more things that could hurt better than it is that it help, you know? So like, just for that for that particular reason right there. Like if a casual wants to watch and you trying to make it seem like stats mean something, and if somebody's two and twelve or one and sixteen or whatever hell. That if you like that in the NFL, nigga, you suck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would get I would get away from that. Yeah, I think they I, I think they have to I, I don't want to say that they don't pay attention to it, but when when they came up with the idea and I think they started to do this, but again, kind of backed off with it. But they need to have they need to have somebody, or just have like a group of people padding the stats. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact that they haven't had anybody padding stats yet, and but basically just taking matches against like just nobodies. Now they did that with Lance Archer to build him up as a monster. They just did that with Brian Cage. Brian Cage debuted at Double to Nothing, by the way. Yep. Won the won the match, so he also gets a shot no he gets a shot at John Moxley for the world championship but they're it, it's like they're they're booking themselves in corners because they're trying to give the biggest and best matches that they can on television which I don't fault them for mm-hmm. at all like you got to do that right but because of that your bigger and better stars have to lose 
And you can't, it's, it's really hard to say, like you said, somebody two and 12, yo, why do I care about them? As a right. matter of fact, they had uh, best friends versus private party for a tag team title shot uh, this past week. And somebody brought it up. Like neither one of those teams are in their top five tag teams. So why exactly did they fight for a title shot? You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't know how you fix that. They kind of booked themselves into a corner with that one. I like the fact that at the, at the beginning of the year, they reset the clock basically. So they'll show people's uh, uh, records from the beginning of time and then also show what it is for the year that counts. But yeah, right. man, they got they got to do they got to do something better with that. And it looked it looked good on paper, but now nah, did you see it actually playing out to fruition? You might want to call an audible on that, uh, Drew Brees. <laughs> 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 All right. So last thing on AEW, man. So the homie Iron Mike Tyson. Yes. Iron Mike Tyson was at Double or Nothing. He was uh, presenting the TNT title and, you know, on that same subject. Well, he showed up on, on Dynamite and the inner circle licking their wounds from losing at the Stadium Stampede, which brought up another hilarious segment with, where they, were, they, they had bought uh, inner circle Stadium Stampede champion shirts. Yep, <laughs> yep. And then Santana Ortiz said, they homie from Brooklyn, I'll hit them up with a truck full of them. <laughs> so... The funny thing about that is Pro Wrestling Tees is legit selling the shirts for half off. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the stuff like that, it, it may, it, that's what makes it great, man. When they do stuff yeah. like that, the shit is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Which, also, I heard a very interesting comment. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say best, but they said their favorite. But one one guy on the Mass Man show was saying that Inner Circle is his favorite faction of all time. Now I'm gonna put the caveat with that. With this is a guy that didn't watch the Attitude Era. He said he checked out like Attitude Era until like 20, I think he said like 2009 or something like that. Yeah, so but he's just still, now watching NWO. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, fuck all of that. I mean, okay, if he, but but you still got Horsemen. You still had Heart Foundation. You oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of all time, uh, nah, them nah, they ain't even close. <laughs> <laughs> it's still too early. Like they've yeah. only been a thing since October, man. It's you know. Yeah, you jump, pump, pump your brakes, uh, Tony Stewart. Damn, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but Iron Mike Tyson showed up on uh, on Dynamite, and him and Chris Jericho got into a confrontation. Right, so it got out there. And literally, like, I was sitting there watching it earlier, and it hit me. I was just like, yo, this is almost a shot-by-shot yep. recreation of Austin and Tyson. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it had the same dude on commentary. Said the same <laughs> things. It was, it, was, it was literally almost shot-by-shot. You right. <laughs> so, which, which brings that up. Like, AEW on Instagram is actually hyping a Mike Tyson – versus Chris Jericho match. Now, it was, it's hilarious to me that when, you know, Mike Tyson is training and he got slimmed down and cut again, and when he said, I'm back, who knew that it might be for pro wrestling? <laughs> I had no idea. That, that was the last thing I would think that he would be doing at all. I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> so, what you, th- what you think about a Chris Jericho versus Mike Tyson match? Oh, man. I don't... I don't think Tyson need to be in the ring, man. Just like when WWE pulled the trigger in that with that Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury thing. Yeah, I think you need to keep those those two away from each other. Like now, granted, you will have you know once in a lifetime things where it it actually played out good with like Big Show and Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not too fond of because I'm, I'm I'm a boxing com- we're, we're, RBS here. We're both boxing connoisseurs, so. Yep. I think those are just two things you need to keep separate. Like if if you go, and, and like they don't need to be in as like a wrestling uh, dynamic. They don't need to be wrestling. They could, yeah. you know, like the way they used Tyson the last the first time in WWE was perfect. That was yep. exactly what you needed to do. Now you gonna have this man taking bumps. Not only that, this dude fifty something, he gonna be taking bumps. Right. He gotta learn move, and they're gonna be botched. They don't. They're gonna be botched. Like don't. I don't think they should do it. I don't use him as get, get somebody that can wrestle for him 
or put him in a capacity where he's an enforcer again, even though we've seen that before, but it's right. working. So I I wouldn't pull the trigger on that. That's just my two thoughts. Yeah. So I think I think I'm okay with this match. And I'll tell you why. Because Chris Jericho, uh, like, you know, we we talk about he he's not right about Black Lives Matter, but what he is right about <laughs> <laughs> is is pro wrestling. I think Jericho will do uh, he will ensure that something happens that doesn't make Mike Tyson have to get in there. That's take true. Groups, that, that's do true. moves. I, I think, I think we'll, he'll do something similar. Since he didn't get to use the idea for Goldberg, he might do some shit like Mike Tyson, knock him out of his shoes. <laughs> so there's, a, there's a story that, you know, with, back in WCW, Chris Jericho was calling out Goldberg and just calling him out week after week and basically trying to build it up. Apparently Goldberg, who was a huge mark for himself, uh, <laughs> hit Jericho up and was like, yo, why are you trying to make me into a comedy act? He was like, no, I'm the comedy act. You're going to kill me. Like, at the end right. of this, we're going to have a match. You're going to destroy me. Right. So Chris Jericho wrote in his book that his plan for the match was to basically, like, buy some boots that were too big. Right. Too big for him. And, like, basically not lace them up all the way. Right. And the match be two seconds where <laughs> Goldberg spears him out of his boots. <laughs> that would have been great. That would have been great, right? That would have been great. <laughs> But he said, like, like he said, at WCW at the time, this part of the reason why he went to WWF is that Eric Bischoff was just like, I don't, like, it doesn't make sense for you to be in a ring with Goldberg. And he was like, I'm putting him over. Right. He's going to spear me out of my boots. Everybody's right. going to see that. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be this moment you're going to show forever. And he, Eric Bischoff was like, nah, nah, Goldberg don't like it, so I'm going to keep him happy. So <laughs> I, think, I think Jericho, especially because they did this shot-by-shot -shot recreation of Austin versus Tyson, I think Jericho might save that and do something crazy like fly out the ring or some shit. And, he, and then they come on, they come on the next week, his head swole up like when Martin fought Tommy like Hearns. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sam, y'all don't want to fight no more. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. But moving on to Friday Night SmackDown. So, have you, hey, did, you see, did you see SmackDown? I can't, I can't believe they pulled the trigger with this one. <laughs> I can't believe they went there. I can't believe they went there. And see, and see, here's, here's the fucked up part. Here's the fucked up part. And being RBS, no, it, it's legit. I'm just gonna leave it as that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So if you if you didn't watch Friday Night SmackDown this week, uh, so it started out with police on the scene, uh, a car accident. And Elias getting put into a, 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 a ambulance, basically because uh, Jeff Cardi, Jeff Hardy, apparently, whose rental car it was that got into the accident, got drunk and ran over Elias. <laughs> <laughs> and they would have found Jeff Hardy. He was laid out, and they were carrying him. They were they had people under each one of his arms and carrying him, and Seen they arrested before. his ass. Seen that now, before. Seen that before. Mm. <laughs> I was like, yo, this look mad familiar. <laughs> this look mad familiar. All I, all, I, all I thought about when I was watching that was somebody being like, oh my God, is that Jeff Hardy? And then somebody being like, oh no, nah, baby, that's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save oh, that story man. for Patreon as well. Yeah, yeah, well, we have to. <laughs> So it, it, that that whole thing started out a whole thing with with Jeff Hardy was supposed to be in the uh, uh, Intercontinental Championship title tournament. So they had a, another battle royal, another battle royal this week. Two days later, uh, with Sheamus won. Sheamus fought Daniel Bryan for the spot in the Intercontinental Championship title tournament. Lost Daniel Bryan, so we got Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles in two weeks. But take it a step back. Take it a step back to the Jeff Hardy. <laughs> I just want to get your whole thoughts. What what were you when, when SmackDown came on? <laughs> and Renee Young was like, "We're reporting live." And then the the first of all, the cop sniffed that thing of beer and it was full. <laughs> and then put down the visor. He was like, "Jeff Hardy, what were your thoughts when that happened?" Literally, what we 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 want to put on our Patreon. Like I still <laughs> I still I just want I do I'm, okay. This might be that the free. I'm not giving you. I'm not gonna give you guys everything of, <laughs> of of said night that we're gonna put on our Patreon. But that if 
if you could take that segment and kind of just dumb it down to some take that segment and put it inside of an establishment where there's it's a bar and there's music it, it was it was pretty pretty legit and uh we don't want to i don't want to jeff jeff hardy's spouse will just, I just i'm just gonna say i'm just gonna say that i'm just gonna say that i'm just gonna say yeah yeah Jeff, Jeff, this is no, there's that meter that went up. Jeff, this is no disrespect. There's no disrespect to you at all. Just know that that was, that was a fun night. That was a fun night. That was a fun night. That was a fun, that was a fun night. That was a fun night. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. So, oh. the, so I mean, that's the, that, 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 that whole scenario made me think of that night. That, <laughs> That needs that I need to go that we can go in detail on our Patreon. <laughs> Come Jeff see Hardy's Patreon. Jeff Hardy's. Can we give Can we give him a free one? Can we this Can we give him a free one? Right? Can we hey, give him a free one? If you, if, you, if you want to, if you want to, just so, go right ahead, bro. Okay, so all these parties that we went to with 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 at, at shenanigans, Jeff or Jeff Hardy would always bring his wife with her, and she was always just like this nice person that would you know that would talk, and she was. She was nice. She was really a really cool person just to talk to. You know, you didn't, it was somebody you didn't want to be disrespectful to or anybody. She was really cordial, like an awesome person. Well, uh, so this one shenanigans that we went to in San Jose, how do I put this? Let's just say we were all having a great time. We were all having we were all having a phenomenal time. Je you know, no, I'm not doing it. I'm no, not doing I was it. Like, I was gonna see how far you were gonna get. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. You need to subscribe to the Patreon, man. That did. Yeah, all you people that's on the SOLC network that's that are new members, welcome. But you need to when we get our Patreon, we talk about these story. This is on the paywall. I'm sorry, man. I'm not giving you free. I'm not giving you free, man. I can't do it. 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 Yeah, y'all gotta pay for this. <laughs> I'll sit there the whole time, like, <laughs> is he going to say? Is he going to? Say, nope. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I was like, am I gonna have to just blur his whole face out Ooh. in the video? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, you should edit it and, and just put on put the uh, Dean Ambrose nope meme on here. Like, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So we just, we just go we just go go ahead and sidestep off of that one that yeah, whole thing. That, well, to answer your question, and thought I, I, to answer your question, I thought of that night. That's what it seemed. Let's <laughs> we'll just go from there. We'll there. <laughs> no, nah, baby, that's somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So we talked about we talked about uh, the Intercontinental Championship tournament. So in two weeks, we got Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Now. Have to take a step back because last time we 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 were on the episode, AJ Styles was on Raw. Yeah. So the thing well, I want to well, talk well, about. Take, take even more step back. Yeah. AJ Styles was buried alive. <laughs> then, he shows up, <laughs> then he shows up on Raw, and then he goes back to where he was at. <laughs> so let's, let's take it all the way. We, he was dead, and now he went to Raw, and now he's he's in a tournament for. Dude, what is up? What's going on with AJ? <laughs> <laughs> he the new Undertaker, dog. He just he can't die. <laughs> so the one thing I wanted to talk about with that man is just like I never thought, and I think you could attest to this too. Back in the days of watching TNA, man, I never thought that. Now I knew that AJ was a big star, and I was a yeah. huge fan of AJ at yeah. the time. And I remember distinctly, like around like you know, 2008, 2009, being like, yo, I hope he never goes to WWE because they're going to screw him up. Fast forward to today, and AJ is the dude that Vince is moving around to pop ratings. How, how did that happen? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I have no earthly idea. <laughs> Especially in WWE in this time. It's just like, WWE does so many things wrong. But then, but then they look at AJ and they're just like, "Nah, but he that dude though. Like, let's 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 yeah, put him on this what? island." You, you're you're right. He's the one person who, who who's literally came, literally the only person who's came from TNA 
that they didn't fuck up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How? How though? I don't know. <laughs> I, could he be in part charge? Maybe he got something in his contract where he's in charge of his credit. Who knows? Who knows, man? I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Man, I, whatever I, it I is, think, whatever it is, I'm happy for him. Like, I, that's that's no that's, that's no good. like why would that? I'm like, all right, let's yeah. let's go. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. Let's let's keep him up there. Yep. So one person I'm not that much of a fan of though. And we'll, we're going to circle back to what I was talking about on NXT. So Matt Riddle is oh. moving to SmackDown. Okay, okay. Now, now. That's not... I see the appeal. I not see the appeal. I see. I, I, okay. I, I somewhat get it. I, but I'm not a fan. I don't, you don't like, like Matt Riddle, that dude, bro. man. You I don't, don't like, like him. Dude, man. You don't like him, man. <laughs> am, am I wrong? Know. Is, is, there, hey, man, is there hey, something man, I'm hey, missing? Hey, Hey man, if we if he's at Rash Shenanigans, man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right next to you if you get a chance to meet him, man. As I don't, I don't, I, cause I, you know I don't know if you just gonna go off and just like yeah, man, you just I don't like you, and then he get mad and he pack off, then we gonna have to go to war. I'm, I, <laughs> I, 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 I see where you coming from, like cause I, I said it before, you're a huge RBD fan, and yeah. it seems like he's trying to be RBD, and that don't sit right with you. I get it, like yeah. it's just like with me, it's like for me. That that person is King Corbin. I go, dude. When King Corbin come on the screen, man, I like. So there's the difference, okay? You're trying to, you're being a heel, and then you're this heel where I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch this dude. I don't. I don't, bro. I would. I'm more entertained by flushing the toilet than to watch king corbin on my tv screen bro to see the, 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 the watching that is more entertaining. the dude's not entertaining bro he's not he's not entertaining man i'm sorry bro i'm not i'm not i'm not like this whole king gimmick has ran his course it's stupid dude they need to put him back with the way he was when he was just whooping motherfuckers ass and he didn't talk once he started i think that's that's what we said this before. Once he started yep. talking, once yep. he started, that was it. Like, bro, it's not even X Pac heat. X Pac's beat is better than him. I don't, I don't care <laughs> for Baron Corbin, man. Yeah. Get him off of my screen, bro. Get, I don't want to see him no more. Like, I literally don't. And it, like I said, like you have hills where they do things where you want to watch him get his ass kicked. I don't even care about him getting his ass kicked. I just don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. <laughs> Send his ass back to Kansas City. I don't want to see him. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I agree with Barry Corbin, man. It's just, I, so it, it's bad. So if Matt and Barry Corbin becomes a tag team, Dude, then we're we're gonna get a segment. That 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 would probably be the, the another the, the third recrescent of the you fucked up, you know your ass is doom award. And it's we call the Matt Riddle and King Corbin award because we just don't like these motherfuckers. <laughs> I think that'll have to be a separate award. Just the, you you have you have the the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award for people that's fucking up. But then we just have the 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 oh that's what it will be. That will be the rent award. It'll be the Baron Corbin. And, and and Matt Riddle <laughs> rant award. <laughs> oh, I'm typed up. I'm write that down. Oh, <laughs> oh man, Corbin I can't stand Baron Corbin, man. I can't. I don't. He's not. It's he's bland. Like and it shows. Like it shows. Like to me, it just shows that he doesn't really want to be there. You know. What I mean? Maybe yeah. I'm wrong, but it it shows. It doesn't show – it shows – to me, it just doesn't show. It's like he's just doing it just to get a check. Now, mind you, there's millions of people, me included, that are doing <laughs> things just to get a damn check. But it's uh, – go to the next topic. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so speaking of awards, that was pretty much all we, all we have for, for the weekend in wrestling. So – Is it that time? It's about that time. Oh, uh, let me put him up here. Where is yes, he at? Yes, sir. Where is he at? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So it is about that time when we highlight someone in the realm of pro wrestling that has been messing up so much. There he is, y'all. There he is right there. Like there that man is. right there. That man right there. We call it the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award. 
RBS, please tell our new you the listeners who are listening to this or watching this on YouTube. On you, shout out to the SOLC for putting us on YouTube. Yes, sir. How do you get this prestigious award? Well, so, first, what is the award called? So the award is called the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award. <laughs> and how do you get this award? So you get this award <laughs> by doing something so stupid <laughs> that you want your freedom to die. You don't want your freedom no more. You want to be locked up. You want to be here. Clank, clank. That clank. right there. That's it. <laughs> so you go out of your way to do things that will ensure. Like John, like John Jones. Jones. Like John, like John Jones. Jones. Like, like getting a DUI in the middle of a pandemic where nobody could go outside. That type of stupid. That type of stupid. <laughs> you get this award. And then we mail it to you. We pack it up in a box. We, we pack it up, we go to ship station. Yep. And then we 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 ship it off. We put a we slap a label on it and you have this prestigious award to put on your mantle to remind yep. you of how much of a dumbass you are. <laughs> <laughs> RBS, who is getting the award this week? All right. So this is this is kind of an old news story, but uh remember that dude that ran up on the WWE Performance Center and got shot <laughs> yeah. like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, so that nigga back. <laughs> that, nigga, that nigga back in the news. <laughs> what did he do? What did he do? So, oh, and wait, wait, wait. Listen to this nigga's name when, when, when I read this. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's gonna make it's gonna make more sense when you hear this name. So, the story is according to wrestling wrestlinginc.com, WWE is taking Armando Alejandro Montalvo back to court. Oh my god. So he tried to be uh Umaga's uh uh uh, uh handler uh, nope. name. Armando <laughs> Alejandro Estrada, that guy. But no, he's Armando He's a cool dude too. Oh, he's a, yeah, he super cool, <laughs> super cool. Armando, Armando's super cool too. Not this, not like not wrestling, the, Armando. Not, not this nigga, Armando. Not, not this motherfucker. We give an award to. No, he, he's ass. Go continue. So, Montalvo <laughs> has been on WWE's radar since he was shot by an Orange County Sheriff deputy outside a WWE Performance Center in Orlando <laughs> after an incident in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was first found uh, competent to stand oh, trial. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Come on. This man, so this man, you mean tell me this man got shot by going into a developmental department of a company. They even, they didn't even show he went to where the uppercomers are going. And right. he <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. For the people, for the people that don't know this story, I'm gonna read the original story. So <laughs> It's titled 29-year-old taken to Orlando Hospital with life-threatening injury. A 29-year-old deranged man. Oh, it says that in quotes, deranged, quote unquote, man was shot after charging at an Orange County deputy at the WWE Performance Center parking lot Monday afternoon. Deputies arrived at the trader facility on Forsyth Road in Orlando around 1.30 after workers reporting a man with a knife in the parking lot. What was he, he doing? Had a knife. <laughs> In the parking lot, the man whose name who's not has been released, we know it now, apparently. We know it now. <laughs> was taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center with life threatening injuries, but in critical but stable condition. The deputy, uh, well, fuck that nigga. Uh, <laughs> Demings, <laughs> we, we fucked the police on this episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all, yeah, it's all, it's only one dude that's immune to that. That's my boy Ron, but that's other than that. Yeah, exactly. Ron, yeah, Ron, Ron, good. Ron, you good. Ron, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, the deputy said that the man in question, Armando Alejandro Montavo, apparently, <laughs> he has been somewhat fixed on one of the wrestlers, one of the female wrestlers. They had most recently consulted with the sheriff's office to hire de extra deputy duty deputies to work off duty. However, today there was not an off-duty deputy working. 
So when the deputies encountered him, they had their weapons drawn. At some point, the individual charged a deputy. The deputy threatened 75, well, I'm sorry, retreated 75 to 100 feet backwards with his gun out. And at some point, the individual <laughs> began to close in on him. He fired one shot, struck the individual. It all happened quickly in a matter of seconds. Now, this motherfucker, <laughs> that's the original story in 2015. This dude back, this dude came back, came back to the WWE <laughs> Performance Center <laughs> five years later. <laughs> this man came back like Debo in Next Friday. <laughs> you remember me, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's that was the whole thing. So they 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 found him competent to stand trial in that incident but he was later found incompetent in 2017 and temporarily sent to a state mental hospital. Montalvo has been involved in several incidents related to WWE and the court since then and was incarcerated for some time. He was also banned from all WWE events. What? <laughs> what what's his name again? Uh, uh, Armando Alejandro Montalvo. A-A-M? You get an award, my dude, man. You you stupid. You can't keep <laughs> you stupid. I mean, this is pretty close in the case right here, man. There, there, there ain't nothing else that we need to talk about with this dude. This dude kept trying to get into the performance center and went back five years later and did the same thing and then got shot. Did he get shot twice? No, he didn't get shot this time. They just called the police on him this time. But yeah, you're getting the award with the commemorative plaque, and the you're not getting a fifteen dollar gas card from Quick Trip. You <laughs> put the five dollar one in there because you stupid. You he get the award, man. He, he can't he can't have no more gas because if he get more gas, he gonna drive he gonna go back, back to up the to the performance center. center. Yeah, yeah, dog. He don't get no more gas. No, no. He don't. You know what? He don't even get the gas card. No, he don't get that. He don't get that. He get the award. <laughs> stupid. Just stupid. <laughs> The thing, the thing that's hilarious to me is that now, of course, oh, now I forgot, I forgot to leave this off with, of course, they said Florida man, because he right. is definitely Florida man. Right. But what does it say? I feel like we might have to give a supplemental award also <laughs> to the state of Florida. Now, yes, that goes without saying that the state of Florida should get this award. But how did the state of Florida find this man first deranged? <laughs> then find him competent. <laughs> then find him incompetent. Then let him out of jail. Like put him in jail. Let him out of jail. And then let him go to the performance center one more again. State of What's Florida. wrong with y'all? State of Florida. <laughs> the whole state. Jacksonville. Tony Khan. Young Buck. AEW. Damn. All Damn. you motherfuckers. Getting the award this week. <laughs> Damn. AEW, AEW just got their first award this week because they in Florida. It's cold, cold game. Cold, cold game. game. It's hot, it's hot. Dude, the, the award has has a mind of its own sometimes. It just It's just the way that things happen, man. Like, the state, you don't feel bad. You're not the first inaugural state to get the award. That was Maryland. <laughs> And Maryland got the award for some shit that didn't even happen there. So <laughs> they didn't even do it. They didn't even they do it. it. <laughs> so state of Maryland. Uh and Armando Alejandro, dumbass, you get the award, man. First class. First class. The the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award. Yep. So we and we had this we had this plan a couple episodes back. At the end of the year, we're going to have a John Jones's Freedom Memorial Battle Royal of all the stories of everybody who's gotten Ray, the Ray, hold up, hold up, time out, time out, <laughs> uh -oh. time out. Uh -oh. We have breaking news. We have breaking news on the week. Oh the my gosh, we got yeah. breaking news. We have breaking news. Hold on. And, and it's 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 because of the John Jones Memorial. It's it's breaking news with John Oh Jones. no. <laughs> Breaking news. Oh shit. Speaking of John Jones freedom. <laughs> what, did, what did John Jones just do? 
What did he just do? Speaking of John Jones's freedom, <laughs> we have breaking news here on the week coming for you, Cass. So apparently, <laughs> I just found this out. John Jones is beefing with the UFC, preferably Dana White. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so, I, so Dana White was just recently on ESPN. And he gave, uh, he was talking about, you know, the event that's with us tonight. Uh, yeah. Shout out to you, Tyron Willie. Go ahead and knock this man out. Get back on top, my bro. Sweet, sweet would. represent you, bro. St. Louis in the house. Yes, sir. Uh, M-I-Z. But, but he, he talked about uh, John Jones. And he said that John Jones... Uh, it's arguably the, the be best mixed martial artist of all time. It's just now that he, he, he's got this black eye with the things he's done outside of the octagon. And uh, he said the main thing that comes with, with John Jones, is, and he's like, because we're, we're talking right now, it's, it's about money. So <sighs> give me your administrative rights, Ray. <laughs> oh, no. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. With, uh, <laughs> here you go. Uh, let's oh, take a look no. at John Jones's Twitter. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ladies, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Jones's Twitter page here. You know, here's John Jones here, you know, riding a bike. This was today. <laughs> but here's the conversation. So we talk about John Jones's freedom, where apparently from his his tweet, he wants his freedom from the UFC. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> he want he wants his freedom to have a job to be gone. Yeah, he doesn't want to be in the UFC. Here's a tweet here. So after that, ESPN went. The, 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 he, the Dana White talked about ESPN. Here's one tweet from Don Jones here. He said, don't be a fucking liar. This is to Dana White. My reputation has already taken enough hits. I don't need this bullshit, Dana. <laughs> I, never, I, I never asked for Deontay Wilder numbers. So we're talking about money. Yeah. <laughs> and and, how, and how, how about since Deontay is making $30 million, we settle for half that since you said I'm the GOAT and everything. That's what John Jones says. His second tweet. I don't even make half of what Deontay Wilder makes. If my reputation causes you to undervalue me this much, just go ahead and release me from my UFC contract altogether. I'm sure a promoter somewhere will be more than happy to pick me up. Oh. <laughs> And if I wanted to compare money to someone else, I would compare money to my brothers. I see, I see firsthand the way the NFL treats their champion athletes. There are a few, there are a huge difference. I've kept my mouth shut my entire career. And okay, oh, it continues. Uh, do I make five plus per fights per year? Yes. Should I stick to that number for my super fights? No. I, if you do, don't agree with me, just know you're just no business. You don't know business. I certainly don't ask for 30, never even threw the number out. So John Jones wants out the UFC because he doesn't have the greatest relationship with Dana White, and we knew that. Yeah, but it's just, it's, yeah. it, it's just apropos that I found all of this right now to <laughs> <we're> not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award. You just, you just got done saying how the award has a mind of its own. And it literally, while we were, while we were talking about it, had a mind of its own. <laughs> Where the name of the, the person in the actual award had something to say. <laughs> wow. He had to speak on it. He, see, what happened was he heard us. He heard us doing this episode. He was like, yo, hey, man. That's my award, hold on. I mean, fuck UFC. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. Can't make that up, man. <laughs> you can't you can't write this. You cannot write this. <laughs> oh man. 
So well, I guess we can talk about our city. We'll yes, our yes, city. yes, yes. Let's go ahead and do it. So we got the segment. We got the you can't spell wrestling without STL segment. What you got, Reddit R? Ladies and gentlemen, with the STL segment, I'm going to bring you the history. And most of, well, some people don't know this, but there's an illustrious title that was called the Missouri Heavyweight Championship. And we're going to talk about that here on our podcast. So let me change this. Nice. St. Louis is on the map, which is right there. There we go. <laughs> okay. The Missouri Heavyweight Championship, which was all, has been defended in St. Louis several times. But here, I'll read it off to you on Wikipedia here right now. Uh, the NWA Missouri Heavyweight Championship was the secondary singles championship in the National Wrestling Alliance, St. Louis's uh, wrestling club, and Central State Wrestling Promotions in the 1970s and 1980s. So we take we give you a little history lesson here. We take yes, it back. Sir. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Was that. usually it was usually dominated by the area's top star, Harley Race, and as such, it was considered a stepping stone to the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. So, mind you. Our little Missouri championship was equivalent to the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's insane. Uh, uh, So, yeah, the NWA World Championship, that was held by uh, Race, Terry Funk, uh, Kerry Von Erich, and Ric Flair. Uh, Gene Kaninsky, Dory Funk, and Jack Briscoe were already former world champions upon winning the Missouri title. A version of the Missouri championship uh, has been documented to exist in 1899. Wow. 1899. Whoa. Uh, 1921, 1933, 1934, 1937, 1947, 1950, 1954 to 1955, but it was only in 1972 that a the championship was abandoned in 1986 as the Central State promotion was being consolidated under Jim Crockett, Jim Crockett Promotions in order to counter the WWF national expansion. So kind of give you a rundown uh, here. Uh, this, this belt was defended in St. Louis, God, a whole bunch of times. I mean, you had uh, at Wrestling at the Chase, you had Harley Race. He was the champion. Uh, then it was vacated in 72. Then in 73, Johnny Valentine got it. That was in St. Louis. Terry Funk, then he wrestled him, got it in 1973. That was in St. Louis. Gene Kaninsky got it. That was in St. Louis. Everything I'm going to mention here was in St. Louis. Then Harley Race got it in 70, October of 73. Dory Funk got it after that in May of 74. Harley Race got it back in February of 75. Bob Backlund even got it in 76. That was in St. Louis. Whoa. Jack Briscoe, that was in 76. Dick Slater, Ted DiBiase, 1978. Dick, the Mur- Dick Murdoch, that was in 1978. Dick the Bruiser, 1978. Dick Mur- Murdoch again. Looks like Bruiser and Murdoch went back and forth. Uh, then Kevin, Kevin Von Erich got it in 1979. Uh, Ken Patera got it in 1980. Ted DiBiase got it again in 1980. Jack Briscoe, 1981. This was all, this was all on, S, uh, on C, uh, CSW, uh, SLWC show. Uh, Ken Patera, Dick the Bruiser, Harley Race, Kevin Bonner, Jerry uh, Blackwell, Harley Race again. Ric Flair got it in 83. Uh, David Von Erich, Harley Race, Jerry Blackwell, Harley Race. I mean, you, you need to listen to these names that got this belt. They're, they're wrestling royalty there. It, this was a prestigious belt that was held right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Some of y'all didn't know that. Now you know. Like I said before, the history of wrestling walks walk through St. Louis. You can't spell wrestling without STL. No, you cannot, man. The Missouri Heavyweight Championship, man, that's super dope. Like, like you said, there were some heavy hitters that held that belt, man. Like, it, I mean, it it goes down the list, and it also makes perfect sense of why Wrestling with the Chase was such a huge program in the city. They yep. they, they they used to say it was Cardinals baseball and then Wrestling with the Chase. Those were yep. two highest rated television shows in St. Louis, that's man. Crazy, so, hey, man. It, it and like the St. Louis Wrestling Club still exists to this day. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a lot of ind- uh, independent up and coming wrestlers, which we got to go one time. There's there's yes. been people who aren't wrestling fans that are just like they love going down there because it's a good time, man. But right. yeah, do your knowledge, do your history, man. St. Louis is a wrestling town, bro. Yeah, right. Yes, sir. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna move on to the last segment of the show where we highlight 
a black wrestler in in the in the world of professional wrestling. And I think it's apropos to do this because his brother just won his first WWE championship yes, this week. Yes, we're sir. going to highlight Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews. Crews Apollo Crews. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, Seisu Uha is an American professional wrestler currently signed to WWE where he performs under the raw brand under the name Apollo Crews and is the current United States champion. That's right. Yeah. So he started his career in 2009, originally working under the ring name Uha Nation. Uha Nation. And yes, sir. Which he got, which he got that nickname from, from playing football. Legend goes that one of his coaches said that he's so strong he could lift up a whole nation. <laughs> so Uha Nation was his name in college. Uh, he made his breakthrough in 2011 when he was signed by the Dragon Gate USA promotion, which also led him to making his first trip to Japan to work for Dragon Gate. In 2014, Uha signed his contract with WWE and was assigned to the developmental brand w uh, NXT. And he was promoted to the main roster in April 2016, standing six foot one and weighing 240 pounds. Uha is known as both a high flyer and a power wrestler. Shout out to the man. I, I still call him Uha Nation from time to time. Yeah, that's yeah I, I do too. I really do too. <laughs> I'm doing, man, I'm going my, I'm going here to try to, I'm getting close to finding this photo. I wish I could get close to it <laughs> at the end of the show. I'm getting really close to finding it. I was trying to put it on here. But yeah, shout outs to Uha Nation. Uh, proud member of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated and probably the first member of that organization that is the United States champion. Damn right. Damn right. So shout out to that brother. And shout out to y'all for listening to this yes. episode of the We Coming For You cast. We appreciate y'all coming on this ride with us, especially as we found out as we give the John Jones Award, <laughs> this breaking John Jones news. You can't plan that out any better, bro. You can't plan that out any better than that, man. That's, that's just classic stuff right there. Breaking news here on the We Coming For You cast. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I am RVS. You can find me at Franchise06, F-R-A-N-C-H-I-C-E-0-6. That's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all that good stuff. Hit me up on the RVS book on Facebook. Also, like I said at the beginning of the show, we have a Facebook group. We have a Facebook group. So sure. if you want to be invited to that, we'll, we'll send out a link. We'll probably put the link in the show notes. But also, if you want to be invited to that group, hit us up. We coming for UCAS at gmail.com. Rated R, where can they find you at? You can find me on all social media platforms at R, the number eight, T, D, underscore R. Hit us up on the We Coming For You cast website at prowrestlingblack.org. Yes, that is a real website, y'all. We say that every week. It really exists. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, y'all don't hear us. Y'all don't hear us. It's, it's, it's real. It's out there. It's, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we appreciate y'all listening to this episode. Make sure y'all stay tuned to the SOLC Network. They, you know, the network's dropping content like, like hotcakes, bro. So. Hot, hotcakes. That's all we do is drop content. <laughs> yeah. like I wanted a show. You want it? You got it. You got it. <laughs> when we get crazy, I'll get crazy. We ain't going to play that just now. We're going to play this MVP clip talking yes. about what talk, – just, just, just talking about why they formed the Beatdown Clan and what that means for America. So, signing off, I am RVS. I am R.O.D. You can catch us again. Same bat time. Kind of same bat station. <laughs> <laughs> bat station being Zoom. Right. <laughs> Holla at y'all later. Peace. Peace. <laughs> we, the Beatdown Clan, we do what we want to do. We take what we want to take. The same way when your United States government wanted Iraqi oil fields, they just took them. When they wanted Libyan oil fields, they just took them. We do that, we take gold, and you speak so badly of us. When we skirt the rules like your Congress does to make the rules work for them, when we do that, you call us thugs. Thugs. You act like you don't know that thugs is a new code word for